Hello, hello, hello. This is Zach with JTNS coming to you this month talking about emergency communications. Uh, we'll go ahead and dive right off into it. Let's get into talking about actual good communication, which is one of the critical aspects of Mayday calls, 911 calls, emergency situations, right? Uh, we got to make sure to be able to provide good, clear, concise information, whether it be to contractors, other co-ops, munis come in and help us during the storms, even just basically conveying that information to our own employees as well, right? Hence, we got to train on this. We plan our jobs out, do those job briefings like we talked about last month, and then honestly, keep your head on a swivel. Watch what's going on, how everything's being run around you. You are in charge of your safety. So when it comes to workers training, right, we got stuff, big boy words, shall, shall be trained in this, shall be familiar with that. Hence the reason why we do pole top, but we also do our bloodborne pathogen. We do our emergency action plans. We do that every year, of course, OSHA mandated, but it's good to do this stuff because everybody needs to know what part they're going to play when something bad occurs. So we got to understand that good, clear communication is the key for Mayday calls. So getting into it, I'd be hesitant to say out of the folks I've talked to this month, nobody wants to hear a Mayday call. Zero. The people I have talked to that said they've heard it, said the hair goes up on the back of their neck. They get this just empty feeling in the pit of their stomach. It's something nobody ever wants to hear. So we've got to recognize what we're doing out there, how the hazards are associated with it, what we can do to keep that from happening and ever hearing a mayday call. So we've got to protect ourselves against this first and foremost, right? We've got to mitigate those hazards. Going a little bit deeper into that, you know I said it last month, I'll say it again this month. I'm a walking example of it. When you have that mayday call, when you have that 911 call, just because you at the electric department, you at the utility, have that information like, oh yeah, that's over at the primary sub. I'm glad everybody knows what the primary sub is. But the 911 dispatch, the brand new, fresh out of school, EMT, EMS folks, they may not know where any of those local landmarks are. So you got to make sure to provide the best information, the 911 addresses, everything you can to get to you. That includes if you've got some really nice uh, subdivisions, homes, farms that have gated access that you typically only are allowed to go to the backside right you go through the back gate well if that's the only code you have you need to make sure to get that code to them hopefully they've got the information to get through the front gate but you give the information that you have that way they can get to you as soon as they can but the biggest thing is make sure everyone is understanding that they are supposed to have this information whether it be the brand new apprentice and line crew if the groundman warehouse engineer meter secretary accounting whoever it is because you might be the one sitting at the desk you might be the one sitting at the truck and hear this mayday come across and you need to be able to take action just like everybody else now of course we'll go into job briefings real quick like we've done last month go ahead and do that because it never hurts to talk about it again Obviously, they're required. You got to do them. Period. Point blank. That's what OSHA says. But hopefully, y'all have taken a little bit better understanding that it's not a piece of paper. It's not a check in a box. It's not a click on an app. It's a tool that you can use to help get the job done quicker, easier, faster, more effectively. And then so everybody knows what part they play in that job. And of course, you know, if you subscribe to the APPA thing, 
got it documented as well. OSHA says you don't technically have to, but I think it's one of the few things APPA has done very well. So we'll hit the five basic things, right? We've got the hazards associated, energy source, special precaution, work procedures, PPE, and then that APPA add-ons that emergency response information. And I cannot tell you how vital that information is. So obviously when we're actually talking to these folks, I can tell you from listening to the 911 call that was made on my behalf, right? I was injured, the fella making the call, college educated, master's degree, always calm, cool, collective fella. He's out of breath, he's running. There's a lot of stuff going on, that adrenaline dump hits. You gotta make sure to know what information to give, when to get it. That's not the time to fill in, oh well, yeah, we got out here first thing this morning and he said his stomach was hurting a little bit. No, 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 we're not talking about that. We're talking about where we're at, who's here, what do you need? That's the best thing you can do, right? The little pertinent information that come in, start trickling in, totally understandable, concise, complete, accurate information, right? Of course, hence the reason why we train, pole top, May Day, whole nine yards, goes into job assignments, everything to job briefings. So if you actually make a mayday call, right? You actually do a 911 mayday call. You're gonna hear me say this. Know that this is a JTNS, maybe more specific to Zach recommendation, right? You follow your company policy. You follow your EAP, your emergency action plan. They're wrote in such a way that they know where you're at, what office, what utility. They know all that pertinent information. What I'm telling you is a generic how we would do it, right? So don't take it as gospel. Take it as, huh, oh, he might have some good points. Might want to run with that. But no, you need to follow your company policy, right? So you make a mayday call, 911 call. Whether you're doing, my two cents would be somebody's making a mayday call as another person on the scene is making a 911. Even though I know that the dispatcher, superintendent is going to make a 911 as well, doesn't matter to me. I want as much information going to that uh, those medical professionals as I can, and that way I can get people headed my door, headed my way, right? Stay calm, try to be cool. Just understand that adrenaline dump is going to hit you. That logical part of your brain is going to get real fuzzy. Make sure you try to stay as calm and cool as you can be, right? Using a radio, obviously got to get a little mic lag key up, make sure the air is clear, channel's clear, do your thing. Obviously, no radio, doing a cell phone, that's a little bit easier, and we'll talk about that in a second. So if you actually hear a mayday call, right, you're not the one making it. Whether you be in the office, dispatching, accounting, whatever it is, you hear it. Whether you be in your truck in a drive-thru. What you need to do is give that person full and complete control of that channel, right? They key up on that mic, they have the airway. You do not interrupt, you do not interject, you do not ask questions. The best thing you can do is record that information. Especially folks in the country, you've got places that are dead and you may not be able to get that information back to the dispatchers you need to record everything you can, whether write it down, put your phone on record. You might be the link between them out there and the actual office. So record that information, write it down. If you're the dispatcher, superintendent taking the call, obviously you need to write it down. Make sure you get all the information you can. The people out on the road, right? Whether you be at another job site, we're recommending you head that way. And it's not because you want to ask questions, you want to find out what happened. It's because you might have information or you might have, um, let's say the AED, right? AED, 
theirs got used twice, battery's dead. They need another one. You've got one on the truck head that way. You got people doing CPR. That wears you out physically. So you need more hands on scene. Head that direction. You might have to help pull somebody out um, of a ditch, right? Get hands on scene. That way you can help do whatever you can. It's not to gawk. It's not to look. It's not to ask questions. It's to go help. All right. But of course, like we said, follow company policy. Do that. Some of the advantages of radios during uh, emergencies. Obviously, they're easy, right? Pick up the mic, click a button, you're talking. There's no fat fingers, you can miss dial, anything like that. Click it up, you're talking. The good thing about it also is typically everybody hears it. That radio at frequencies company wide, people can come along, they can help, people can convey that information. That's some good stuff about some radios. Of course, they've got their downfalls. Just like everything else, spotty coverage, dead spots. If you've only got a vehicle mounted radio, it might be something that the, the bucket may contact when it's on fire. Uh, the, the, the meter truck was involved in a car wreck. Um, the, whoever's taking money to the bank or whoever's picking up mail they were involved in a car wreck and they don't have access to the radio. That's another bad thing about it. You gotta make sure to have another way to get a hold of people, i.e. cell phones. Uh, and a real bad thing about radios is that that airways, you know, nosy Nelly listening to a scanner can pick up stuff. That being said, that would be one of the worst things in the world I could imagine is having a mom, a dad, a brother, a sister, a husband, a wife, get information via Facebook or Instagram or text or having your kids at school turn their phone on at lunch and receive a text that says, blah, 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 passed away. That would be horrific, right? And that even worse, that it would be wrong information. It's one of the bad things about it. People hear stuff, pass it along when they shouldn't. Right, so that's one of the downfalls of radio as well. Getting into cell phones, obviously everybody's got one, right? It's not like it's a newfangled thing. Everybody's got one, toted everyone with them most of the time. Uh, obviously, they're you know easy to tote them around. Ain't like they you know have to stay attached somewhere. Uh, another good thing about them is you make a nine one one call, you're talking to that nine one one trained dispatcher that typically has templates, um, checklists to walk you through, hey, have you done this? Check for this, do that. Even though we're trained, CPR, first aid, I know we're trained on it, but these people help you walk through that. Make sure you're not missing things, right? So just like radio, cell phones got drawbacks, uh, dead spots, bad coverage, <laughs> my daughter is real bad about this. She can have a cell phone go down to 2%. I don't quite understand how in the world she does it, but it drives me insane. Keep them charged. Good Lord. It ain't that hard. Just plug them in, right? Uh, catch 22 of this. Company policy might say, hey, got to leave the phone in the truck, right? Like I said, this is my two cents, my opinion. You're handicapping guys doing that, right? It's not like I want my phone on me when I'm going off down here to ride away so I can surf marketplace. If I got a guy in the bucket waiting to pull wire up, I've got to go on a ride away to get it out of there, snake it out from under something, uh, get snake bit, uh, fall off in a stump hole. I can call for help, right? I don't have to wait for 5, 10, 15 minutes where they can't hear me over the loud truck stuff. So. My two cents, better to have it than not. Uh, another disadvantage is with a radio, everybody hears it and they can come help. Cell phones directly to 911, so the crew right down the road may not know nothing even happened, right? So another catch 22 on it. 
So depending on your policy, EAP, whether you use both phone, radio, whatever, follow that, do what you're trying to do. Like I said, we recommend using both. It's going to help your fellas, help your people get, you know, medical assistance to them as quickly as possible. So the actual procedure, right? Via radio, you key up and you hear that mayday, mayday, mayday three times. That tells everybody, stay off. Do not key up. Do not talk. Do not do anything. I have the channel. I'm in control of this. Whoever's listening, whether it be the dispatcher, somebody upstairs, meter, warehouse, whether you're sitting in the truck at a drive through you need to record, write down, get this information. You might be able to convey it, but if you're the actual responder or dispatcher taking this, they're going to key up and hit mayday, mayday, mayday three times. If you're not involved in it, you can give your name, truck number, employee number. We don't recommend giving the actual injured employee's name. We don't want that going out over the air, but give them who you are, where you're at, what you need. Not, well, this happened 10 minutes ago and this is going on. Who you are, where you're at, what you need. You want that information out. Dispatcher or receiver is going to get it. Repeat it to you. I personally like three-way communication because y'all can obviously tell I've got a little bit of an accent. I might, be, I might occasionally be misunderstood or misheard. Try to get them to repeat back to you what they said. So if I made it, made it, made it, hey, I'm at blah, 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 street. Um, I had a contact, we need an ambulance. I want to read back to you, you're at blah, 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 street. You've had a mate, you've had a contact, we need an ambulance, right? However your policy does it, follow that, of course. That's what we recommend. Obviously, if your policy is that they contact 911, cool beans, roll with it. I recommend both. If you've got another man on site, another person on site, call them up. Best thing to do. Uh, but stay off the channel. Everybody else, stay off the channel. When you think it's over, oh, well, I can ask questions. I can, I can see what's going on. Nope. As far as you know, they're going to go around the side of the truck, see somebody else injured that they didn't realize was injured, and have to key back up and give more crucial information, right? And you're going to end up, you know, messing that up. Stay off of it. They have command of that channel until they release it, all right? Best thing you could do. Cell phone, just a little bit different. Obviously, you're, we're not talking to our dispatch. We're talking to 911 dispatch. Those 911 uh, dispatchers, they're trained on this. They know what questions to ask on nine yards. But you, as the caller, calm, cool, collective. It's going to be hard to do. Calm, cool, collective. Where you're at, what kind of mercy you got going on, what you need, right? Obviously, like I said, we're trained. We know what we're doing. They're typically going to do pretty much the same thing. Say, hey, you're, you know, whoever, you're at whatever location. We got ambulance on the way. They're probably going to stay with you on the phone. Maybe even if you're just two-man crew, tell you to put it on speaker, set it down, and then help you walk through chest compressions, help you walk through whatever you need to do. They typically will do that until that actual help arrives, which is fine with me. I mean, the more help you can get, the better off you'll be. So to button this thing up, finish it up. Main points, right? Clear, concise, effective communication is critical when it comes to this. Like I said, nobody ever wants to hear this. The people that have said, you know, 17 years here, and I've heard it one time, and it just it's a, it's a terrible, terrible feeling. Just like car insurance. We, you never want to use it, but you got it. We need to have this information. We need to have this training because we don't ever want to use it. If you do, 
make sure you know who to call, who's doing what. That's why last month, right? Last month, I said, hey, if you don't if you don't apply to the 17th edition of the APBA, cool beans. But one time, at least one time, have a coming to Jesus with your people and say, hey, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this. And, of course, most time, oh, well, yeah, uh, the former's called 911. Hey, great answer, man. Unless it's the foreman that's been in the wreck, unless it's the foreman that's had a heat stroke, you're going to have guys running around AED, first aid, compressions, and look at each other and be like, I thought you were doing it. Have a good coming to Jesus to where everybody knows what their responsibilities are. You cannot overemphasize that. In fact, my two cents, I personally think it, it, it ought to be a mandated thing that every utility has to walk through a training exercise like this every year to where the utility, whether it be muni, co-op, we typically have good working relationships with local government. Get a hold of the police department, get a hold of the sheriff's department, get a hold of uh, Life Flight, get a hold of whoever you got to get a hold of and say, this day, we're going to have a contact. This day, we're going to have a chainsaw accident. This day, we're going to have a car wreck. Get them out there, respond like it's a real thing. Because the only way to poke holes in those EAPs and those emergency action plans and those company policies is to do it. A lot of times this industry is very reactive. When somebody got hurt, the rules get changed. Let's be proactive. Let's go find these things that we can fix before somebody gets hurt. So just my two cents. I think it's a good thing you could do. It's good PR anyway, right? Plus, should, you know, help bolster morale and everything else. The more people are comfortable with this, the less anxiety is attached to it, the less uh, delay, the less bad information, the less things are going to go wrong when something does go wrong, right? So good, effective uh, communication. Get it out there to the appropriate folks. Make sure you get help on the way. In fact, this last slide right here, right? I found this, decided to throw it in. Because I've been saying coworkers this whole time. Coworkers. It may not be coworkers. It might be somebody's babysitter. It might be somebody's mom, somebody's granddad. Then on the way to a job, on the way back to the warehouse, on the way to lunch, you see this kind of incident happen, right? 2016 Northern Virginia Electric Cooperative lineman driving. Unresponsive man on the side of the road being held up by a woman. Pulled over, 911, jumped into action, CPR, all that. All the stuff we've been trying to do, right? This fella that he's probably never met in his life, never seen before. EMS arrived, all that good stuff. As he's going back, right, he's going to load back up. He sees uh, the man sitting on the stretching at paramedics says, hey, because of what you did, this man's alive. That's the thing about it. We can make that difference. We can make that difference in somebody else's life. We can make that difference in a coworker's life. And I'm not talking just the guy doing the chest compressions. I'm talking about person receiving the call, the man or woman upstairs, the man or woman in the office, every part of that is crucial. Every part of that is vital. We have to do this because nobody ever wants it to happen, but we have to know what to do when it does, right? So I appreciate y'all this month. Uh, any questions or comments, obviously, I can't hear you. <laughs> Feel free to uh, email or text in, I guess. Uh, but I greatly appreciate it this month. Hope you all have a wonderful one. Stay safe. Uh, keep all them folks in East Tennessee and North Carolina and Florida. Uh, any, any prayers there.